Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at someone failing to get a job after how poorly they did, apparently, in their take-home assignment. Now it's very common when you interview for a software engineering role that the interviewer will say, here's this problem, go ahead and solve it and after one, two, three days send us back the code base, we're going to evaluate it and then we're going to let you know. And that is generally, in my opinion, a very good idea to see how the person writes code. However, there's many problems with this as well. The biggest drama point is that, of course, it takes a lot of time. And when you're interviewing for jobs and everyone wants you to do a three, four hour coding test, then it can eat into your free time. But also those tests are almost always unpaid. And if you keep failing interviews, you just lose so, so much time. I have seen some companies paying for these take-home assignments, at least for your time, but it's very, very common, at least in the UK where I'm based, that it's totally unpaid. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because this person linked to the GitHub repo of the code base they submitted, and I wanna go ahead and review it and see, okay, was the feedback they got warranted or not? Let's take a look. So the title is, I got nuked from my solution to a take-home assignment. Recently, I have applied for a .NET job on a second stage, which, by the way, this is very common. The second stage is usually the take-home assignment. On a second stage, I have received a take-home assignment to create a REST API. I had to contain an in-memory database, use entity framework, allow users to create trips, edit and delete them, list all of them, search by country, and get a single trip with all the data, and finally register for a trip. Extremely common use case. It's basically CRUD-ish. API with some functionality. I've sent my solution in and today the recruiter passed the following feedback from the person who reviewed my code. Usually a senior engineer or a team lead reviews those, by the way. So the feedback was all in one project, which I personally have an issue with. We're going to see why. Unit tests are there, but without knowledge of test writing practices. Okay. Not understanding how to use empty framework. That is not amazing feedback. Not knowing how to use .NET Web API and its capabilities. Ouch, this feedback is pretty harsh. Let's take a look at what the person has to say. So they understand the all-in-one project uh, criticism very well as they could have separated the project uh, into API core and structure, which we'll see if I agree with that or not. They don't understand the other points. For the record, they're not disputing the criticism. I just want to learn from my mistakes and not commit them again in the future. Since I cannot ask the recruiter for more information on this matter, I would like to ask you what could I have done better in the solution. So I'm going to take a look at this code base because this is the feedback. And let's take a look. I haven't seen any of this. I just committed the code base, made sure it builds. So we're gonna go ahead blind in here and you're gonna get my reaction on it. Now, the first thing I would do as an interviewer is I would go to the tests and make sure that they first run. Of course, I have to check that the project is building as well. So I'm going to hope it does. Yes, it does. I'm not going to run it yet. I will run it in a second. And then let's go ahead and run the tests. So everything detected run them and they all pass. That is great. Now that doesn't mean much. You can have some tests that are passing that do nothing. So I'm not going to focus too much on the fact that they are passing. Now I can see it's using X unit over here. Uh, do we have any mocking libraries? Yeah, we have MOQ. Fine. Uh, we have some setup in the constructor. We're using EF uh, in memory for the test. That's fine. Uh, we have, uh, I think, a decent naming structure. It's not the way I teach it on Dome Train, my unit testing course but that's not something I would fail someone for. Uh, arrange act assert. This looks weird. I don't know why you would test this class like that. You would go to the context trips to do validation to make sure the item was added. Didn't you have a result out of it? You sort of look one level. I don't know if I agree with that approach, but I don't know if I would fail someone for that yet. The tests look very, very basic. I'm not going to stand too much on them. Poor use of nullable reference types here from what I can see. I guess we're going to see more in the project itself. I guess the tests are possible, but they don't really show me deep understanding of unit testing. But that is fine. It's not something I would say uh, we absolutely can't accept this test. Now, should you use something like Fluent Assertions for this? Maybe, especially if you want to impress the interviewer. But the xunit.assert class will do the job just fine. It's not 
fundamentally wrong to do any of that. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that after incredible demand, we just launched our very first Blazor course on Dome Train called Getting Started with Blazor. And it's an incredible seven hour course introduction into Blazor by Jimmy Ekstrom. Now, Jimmy has been using Blazor from the very beginning, using in production. He's written a book about it. He's an MVP about it. He has given international talks about it. So he's one of the best people in the world to teach Blazor. This is the best, most up-to-date course to get started with Blazor. And in seven hours, you're going to learn lots of things. So this is not just an introductory course. You will be able to build Blazor applications after you take it. I'm going to put the link in the description. And the first 400 of you can use discount code GSBLAZOR20 to get 20% off at checkout. Now back to the video. Let's look at the main project itself. So we have an HTTP file with all the endpoints. We don't. If you check in a project and you have an HTTP file, make sure that reflects the API as it is when you check it in because that endpoint doesn't exist. Uh, so don't do that. What I also noticed is that when this project was checked in, you can see that the person checked in a .vs folder as well as a bin and object folder. Don't check in artifacts. Just make sure you use a git ignore when you do these tests. That's a massive red flag for interviewers never check in artifacts. I used to work with someone when we were in the review committee, they would immediately fail someone if the tests are failing and if there's artifacts checked in, because at least in our case, we had clear instructions, do not check those in. And if you can follow that, his take was you can't do the job reliably. And then we have a program.cs. Uh, we don't have minimal APIs, we have controllers. That's not a red flag at this point, I would say, but some interviewers might prefer uh, minimal APIs, and this can go both ways. Some of them might prefer controllers. And this is to say, you should be aware that some interviewers will be very opinionated and they would want you to make things the way they want them. For example, using a single API project was a big red flag for that interviewer. It was the first thing they said. I fundamentally disagree with that. I don't think you would need to have 15 projects for a simple API with three endpoints. You're not going to build the production ready. Like, okay, then say, where are your Kubernetes configuration files? Where's your Docker Compose? Where's your, like, we don't need to push it that far. It's a test to see if the person can write some basic code. And it would be nice to know if this person is interviewing for a junior, senior, or mid position don't know, so I can't judge it based on a level, but I would question why you're using Newtonsoft.json as a serializer of your API. That's a bit of an older thing, I think .NET Core 3.1 and previous. Um, now we have the in-memory database that was requested, some endpoint registration, and then basic redirection, and that is it. Then for controllers, we have two of them. We have the registration one, which Ah, that's a bit of a problem because you use the route with the API and then we have the controller uh, route parameter, which means that if I actually run this API, the endpoint names are like this. You have API registrations. Usually the name should be consistent and usually in REST APIs, it should be lowercase. So lowercase registrations, which is fine for a REST endpoint because in REST endpoints, resources are named as plural, but then you name your trips endpoints trip, which is a red flag for REST APIs. The standard says it should be plural. So you should have immediately failed that test because it's not a REST API. You don't really understand REST APIs and you leave naming of your REST API to chance. One of the first thing I teach in my REST API course is that you never, never, never use the controller parameter like this for REST APIs or for any type of API because you leave the name up to chance. You want to make a class, you want to put your endpoints there, the names there consistently, and then reuse that parameter there. Then you use the API controller, which is good if you want to use validation, but then you do your validation manually. And not only do you do it manually, you have an argument exception here, which isn't really meaningful. And you generally don't want to have argument exception try catches in your controller itself. Assuming this is for a junior test, I would let it slide. But for any position higher than that, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. Also, this all looks very wordy. Uh, what I mean by that is you don't want to crumb this response over here. You'd want to have something like this where you say, registrations equals and then this passes down the registrations here i would prefer this i think it reads better uh, then you have a warning here because the registrations are not marked as nullable 
in your, in this case, your interface. So this should be nullable if it could be nullable. And if you don't want to use that, turn off nullable reference types. Uh, and then in the implementation, you should also have this to be nullable. And then you can say if this is null. But then in this case, you don't have to manage this because the registration can be null because find async returns a nullable entity anyway. So you can simplify this even further and you can simplify this even further. So I do kind of agree with the person saying that maybe you don't have a full understanding of entity framework core. Then the trip controller, same issue. If this was trips, you would not have this REST API standard issue, but you really don't want to be using the route parameter like this with a controller parameter. I'm not a big fan. And again, the argument exception, bad request. Also, you don't want to leak the exception message in the bad request because that's a customer facing response and they might write some code to handle that maybe. So if you return a bad request, return a consistent message for all your bad requests. Usually what you would return is the problem details response. So this response is kind of the standard. In fact, you can say return problem and that should realize your detail, instance, status code, title and type into that object. But you can also use the new problem details service that allows you to inject that service and make a response out of that. Um, then you have the update trip over here. Same thing like this could be so, so simpler. Also, generally, I don't like returning messages when something is not found. Would I fail someone for that? Maybe not, but I would bring it up in the interview to say, why do you feel like you have to return that? Again, nullability not understood correctly. Get returns OK. Search returns OK. That's all fine. Delete not found and end no content. Put returns no content. You can also return OK and return the updated object body. And then you have post, which returns created action, which uses the parameter. So that will create the location header. That's not necessarily wrong. And then in the service itself, do we have anything I should look at? Add save changes, fine. Maybe you want to return whether that save changes returned um, an updated count. And then based on that, because that will return how many items you updated with these save changes, then maybe you can tell the user the item was created or the item wasn't created. But again, I wouldn't necessarily fail you for that. Uh, then update looks weird because you update by setting the state of the object as modified instead of just saying update and pass down the trip. So yeah, you kind of do the same thing, but in a more verbose way. I wouldn't do that. And I understand Then you handle concurrency exception like this. <sighs> yeah, I can understand why this test was failed, but I would put it in context. Was this a junior developer position? If it was, then I would let it go. For mid, I would be very close to saying pass or maybe add another stage where we go with the person and they talk me through the solution. They explain to me why they made every choice so I can understand the thought process. I really wouldn't name a folder interfaces, massive red flag. Same for models. I know this is an artifact from MVC but I don't like naming things based on what I'm storing in them. I like naming things based on verticals. So I would have my registrations and then I would have my uh, trips folders and everything would be there. And in fact, I wouldn't even have interfaces in a separate file. I would just merge them into their classes, simplify my solution very, very much. So my opinion on this, I don't agree with the all in one project criticism. If that was a big thing for the interviewer, I think that the person who submitted this test with name, uh, they dodged the bullet. But if the position was for mid or higher, I do think it was fairly failed. But overall, I don't think it was that bad. I think we're missing context in what position this was submitted for. If it was for a junior, totally get the person in. If it was for a mid, maybe have a chat. If it was for a senior, maybe the recruiter was right, but I still don't agree with the all-in-one project. But I want to know from you. I'm going to put a link in the description. You can check out the project and maybe you give your own feedback on this code test using the comments down below. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.